Hello, and welcome back. This is the third tutorial video for Liquid Physics 2D. Um, in this video, I'm just going to clear up and define um, some of the terms I'm using, and I'm also going to talk about the relationship between transforms and uh, offsets, rotations, and the, the coordinate system of Box 2D. Um, it's probably a bit boring, but it'll be short, and it's uh, I think it's important. So, um, if you're familiar with uh, Unity's uh, 2D physics system, uh, I they, they actually use Box 2D, but they use slightly different terminology, and I think that's because they want the terminology to be the same as their, their existing uh, 3D physics system that they had. So in Unity, you have uh, things called uh, colliders and a rigid body, and in Unity, you can add a, a collider to... Um, a game object and it'll it'll function like a, a static body. Um, in Box 2D, it's uh, it's slightly different, um, and uh, I'm just mentioning this because I may end up using the Box 2D terminology and uh, you know in, in my code commenting or in my videos and so on. So just so people know what I'm talking about. And also, if you do have a look at the Liquid Fun uh, or the Box 2D um, documentation. Um, uh, you know, you'll want to be familiar with that uh, terminology. So, let's say we just create a, a new empty game object, and if I add go to a component, uh, Liquid Physics 2D, now if I just add a body, um, th this is basically um, a thing in the physics system that it has a uh, um, position, it has rotation, and, you know, um, it has uh, velocity, but um, it, it has no mass, and it has no uh, actual, you know, um, <laughs> physical manifestation, so it can't collide with anything. It, so if I just press play, um, this, this thing that I've made, it should just uh, fall under gravity. Okay, it's actually, <laughs> it's static, so it'll, it'll just stay there, but if I make it dynamic, we should just uh, see it fall under gravity, and it, it, it won't it won't collide with anything, like, for instance, if I put it here, it won't collide with any particles, it won't collide with uh, this static thing here, you know, um, it, it's pretty much like a ghost. So, to give this uh, an actual uh, shape is, um, we add these uh, colliders. Now, um, I've called them colliders here in the menu because um, that's what uh, Unity uses. But in Box D, um, when you do this, it's actually called a fixture. So when I create um, this box, you'll see that the actual component is called LP Fixture Box. So in Box D, um, this is how you make uh, solid objects. You have a body, and you have a fixture on that body that kind of gives it form. And also the um, using its density. Its weight is calculated, and its its center of mass, and so on. Um, so you can see, um, this is a, a dynamic body component. Um, so a body component with a, a dynamic body type, and uh, a box fixture. And uh, this one here, for example, is a polygon fixture, and also has a body uh, with just a static body type. So, in Unity, the way that would work is that uh, the static one wouldn't actually have. Uh, it wouldn't have the rigid body component that um, that Unity uses. Uh, also, just if you're curious, this um, kinematic body type is uh, just a kind of third body type, and what you use that for is um, you might use it for things like bullets. Uh, kinematic bodies they they're not affected by gravity and they're not affected by collisions. They're just affected by uh, velocity. So if you want something to just move, like you know, a bullet in like a kind of bullet hell shooter. And, uh, you know, you want to use it to detect collisions, you know, and so on. Okay, so that's the uh, nomenclature. Um, next thing is just the relationship between uh, Unity's uh, transform system and also in Box 2D, um, uh, it, it has uh, every um, fixture can actually have an offset and uh, a rotation and uh, things like that. So. If we just go back to this uh, game object you created with the the body and the um, the dynamic or the dynamic body and the box fixture, <clears throat> you can add as many fixtures as you want to the same body. So I'd actually recommend doing this because it, it's probably saves some performance because uh, you know the, there's less bodies and um, 
you know, it won't calculate collisions between uh, the the fixtures on the same body. So let's say I just uh, add a polygon uh, uh, fixture to this, and uh, I'll just draw whatever this. Um, stop drawing. So, and let's say I'll just I'll, I'll continue and I'll uh, I'll add a a circle. Now, um, you'll see that. Um, this uh, body's actual transform, um, that's actually and, and and its rotation here in Unity, that's actually the body's uh, position and rotation in the physics world. So if we press play and just monitor this, we'll you know obviously see these numbers changing the rotation, in that x and y position. Um, <clears throat> but as well as this, uh, each fixture on the body can actually have its own offset. So if we have a look at this circle that I just made, uh, if I change its offset, we can kind of move it in relation to the body. Um, uh, let's see, make it a bit bigger. Um, so if we have a look at what happens now. Um, so th this is all one body, and it just it's just uh, composed of these, these different uh, shapes. Um, so we can also change something's rotation. So let's say this poly shape that I made, um, I change its rotation. Um, so you see it rotating around there. Um, also, uh, I can independently change its its radius. Um, same with the the let's say the box fixture. I can uh, make this longer. I can offset it a bit. I can change its rotation. And so let's say we'll. Uh, Press play now. So yeah, that's what happens. Um, so, in addition to this, Unity has its uh, transform system and a nested transform. So, if you change rotation on this, then it will rotate the whole thing around. Um, and uh, you know, there we go. Um, also, uh, there's the scale component. So let's say we. Uh, just scale one axis. Now you'll see that um, the circles don't actually uh, change when they scale. That's because in Box Studio, a circle is a kind of a, a special sort of um, uh, shape, and it's you know it's uh, very cheap, cheap to simulate. So it's either circular or it's not. So if you wanted um, to have something that's like a circle that can also be distorted by a scale, uh, I would say use a a polygon shape and just uh, draw an ellipse. Um, so I'll, I'll just leave that circle for now because it's kind of I think it's slightly confusing the issue. Um, okay, so now we've got a scale in one direction. So um, if we press play, like pretty much what you see on screen here with the gizmos is, is what you get in the physics system. Um, so this next issue, this is kind of <laughs> complicated, but uh, it's uh, kind of important to show. So if I take this game object, let's say I duplicate it, I'll make another one. And now I'll create another game object. I'll take these two. I'll make them a child of this one. And now if I scale the uh, actual, the parent game object here, um, you know, it's, it's you'll see what's happening, what's making it skinnier and skinnier. Now the thing is, if you uh, if you um, <clears throat> uh, if I rotate one of these child objects, uh, you'll see that see, see the whole shape is distorting. Now, um, <clears throat> what, what I've done to kind of uh, sort of unify you know Unity with a uh, box two D is <clears throat> uh, whatever you see on screen here when you press play is is the shape that you're going to get when the simulation runs. So if we uh, just uh, press play, you'll get this shape. Um, but as these two, see these two um, actual bodies aren't connected together, but um, as they rotate, uh, they won't distort. Whereas, um, so let's say, I'll just uh, give this one a bit of rotation. So when I when I hit play, um, whatever shape I'm seeing here is uh, is going to remain the same. Whereas, let's say in Unity, um, 
if I if I had actually put a sprite in here in this kind of nested system with the the different scales, as one of these child uh, objects rotates, the sprite would actually distort. Um, you can't do that on Box Studio. Like the shapes are, they cannot be altered. Um, the only way you could do that would be to um, basically delete it, the fixture every frame and, and create a new one in its place with a slightly different shape. Um, so yeah, that was um, that was quite a complicated um, issue, and um, probably won't come up. But I just wanted to uh, to clear that up. Okay, so the last thing I'm going to talk about in this video is just a scale. Just um, just remind people that um, you know, the scale of Unity is you know one uh, is is one meter. So if we look at this position here, minus eight, that's minus eight meters. And so, so the size and the position of everything is is uh, measured in meters. So, and because of um, particles, uh, like if we have a look at this uh, particle group, we see that the radius is is 1.7. So this is a a particle group with a radius of 1.7 meters. So it's it's huge. It's you know as big as a a room. Um, so just keep that in mind that you know um, maybe make things of an appropriate scale. Um, only thing is, don't make things too small because <clears throat> sometimes if you try and make, let's say, a polygon shape um, with a vertices, or, you know, let's say it's got some really, really skinny little elements, and let's say the vertices are, are really, really close together, um, the uh, box 2D will actually merge those two vertices into one, and it might um, make your shape invalid and you'll just end up getting a default box instead. Um, so one thing that is, is really important in terms of scale is that if we have a look in the LP manager prefab, um, have a look in the particle system. So we've seen this before, the particle radius. So um, uh, it's really important for kind of getting the, the scale of your game right. And also in terms of uh, performance, like uh, you kind of you don't want to make the particle radius too small because you'll end up having, you know, many thousands, tens of thousands of particles, and you know it might be too much for whatever your target platform is. Um, one thing, if you think uh, things look a bit too kind of big and, and and floaty, you know, let's say, and if we want this scene to appear smaller, we just change the gravity scale. So if I just I'll make this make this four instead of one um, and uh, we'll see it you know this is falling down faster it kind of it kind of makes the scale of things look smaller so in your game you know you'll probably want to <clears throat> spend a while tweaking these and, and the different parameters and you know kind of get a nice balance or get the behavior you want and, and get a nice balance with performance as well um, yeah one other really important thing just mentioning performance is if we have a look in the uh, LP Manager uh, component itself, here in, in the, the the parent object in the LP Manager prefab, um, you'll see uh, there uh, are first of all the time step, which basically um, is how <clears throat> much time the simulations should step through. Um, at the moment. The, the simulation steps um, in the fixed update uh, um, event handler method in Unity. And so it, um, the amount of time it steps through is uh, 1 divided by 60. So there's, there's this parity there between those two. Um, but if you wanted to, you could try and make it step through more time to you know make it appear as if the simulation was going a bit faster. But you might lose some kind of accuracy in that case. There's also these velocity iterations and position iterations, which basically are how high quality you want the um, the uh, reaction of the different bodies to be in the simulation. Um, the the values here at 6 and 2, they're like the default ones that they, they say to use, and I think it should be fine. Um, <clears throat> uh, now this, yeah, this next thing is really important. It's the uh, particle iterations. So this is probably in your game, you know, uh, you know, if you have a lot of particles, you know probably the most expensive part of your game in terms of CPU is going to be the particles. Um, I mean, if you have thousands and thousands of them, so um, this uh, particle iterations is just 
telling uh, the the system how high quality to, to simulate those. So um, at the uh, I always at the default is to, to override. Um, if you don't do this, uh, the system will actually pick a value. It decides the best. But I actually think it's better just to do it yourself, depending on your game. And I, I think two is actually a very good value. So like say so if we were to set this to one, um, it, it's doing way less calculations. So you can have way more particles and it's cheaper. But you can see it's it's very unrealistic looking. You know, it's kind of. Um, but you know, depending on your game, uh, you know, you may want that. Um, so let's say we set it to to four. So um, it's just more fidelity. So um, <laughs> it's uh, well, going a lot faster as well. Um, but yeah, it's kind of you kind of get more of a natural you know water reaction. Um, so uh, I, I I like it too. It's kind of a standard value. And and like I said, uh, all these things. You'll um, you'll probably want to experiment with uh, depending on your game. Okay, so uh, yeah, that was a bit more technical video. Um, hope uh, it wasn't too boring. And uh, thanks for watching.